With the Cube Thinker i35, we tested another Chinese laptop with full metal body, which tries to impress by offering decent specs at a comparably affordable price tag. The Cube Thinker i35 at a price tag of around 560 to 700 bucks, depending on available deals, tries to compete with the Mi Notebook Air and also wants to be a cheaper Surface Book alternative. We have received the Cube Thinker i35 from GeoBest and did give it a shot in an extensive one week real life test. Enjoy watching this review for all the details. The Cube Thinker i35 comes in a very nice premium packaging. The entirely black box is closed using magnets and can be flipped open towards the top. Inside, next to the laptop, there is a 12V 3M power supply with IEC 60320-C7 plug, but there only is a Chinese cable included. There also is a huge black envelope which contains a quick start guide that, you already guess it, is black as well. The laptop is entirely made from metal and thus looks and feels like a premium device. The design looks pretty nice. The bevel around the base has a glossy finish to it, which is an eye catcher. Another glossy bevel is situated around the trackpad. The design looks similar to the one of the MacBook Air series with its cuneiform shape. Considering the specs it packs, the Thinker i35 is quite thin with the base part boasting a maximum thickness of 7.9mm and 2.6mm at its thinnest point. The weight at 1.67kg is quite high though. Now if based on the high weight you expect an extremely sturdy metal body, you sadly are wrong. The metal actually is quite thin. This results in a noticeable flex when putting slight pressure onto the center. The lid is much more sturdy thanks to thicker metal, but that is important since you don't want to see the expensive premium screen damaged from transportation, right? The screen is entirely covered by glass and the bezels are rather slim. Above the display there is a webcam and on the left and right side of it a microphone. Above the keyboard are three blue indicator LEDs for power as well as NUM and caps lock. Around the laptop on its left side we find a DC in port with charging LED, a USB 3.0 port and a USB Type-C port. On the right side there is a headphone jack and another USB 3.0 port. The speakers are hidden within the hinge of the laptop and thus invisible and protected from being covered. The Cube Thinker i35 packs the very same screen as the Surface Book, a fully laminated 13.5 inch IPS LCD panel with an insane resolution of 3000 by 2000 pixels. The screen can get very bright and thus is still readable under bright sunlight despite the glossy glass front. The screen quality is excellent in every aspect, colors are very intense, look vivid and really do pop without looking unreal. The contrast and black levels are great too and of course due to the high resolution, single pixels are invisible as long as you don't touch the screen with your nose. Viewing angles are awesome as well, even from very sharp angles you won't see any change in colors, just the brightness will be reduced a little bit. One more highlight besides the Panasonic brand screen is the touch panel, since even this one is the very same found in the Surface Book. That means that the Surface Pen is compatible with it and of course the touch panel works just great with high sensitivity and accuracy. Just in case you worry, the screen glass during our test has remained free from scratches and also fingerprints take quite a while to settle and are rather easy to remove. A weak point of the Cube Thinker i35 is its keyboard. At first it seems decent since the keys seem solid and there is no bounce when typing. The tactile feedback is a bit mushy, but that's something you get used to quickly. But when actually using the keyboard in real life, especially for typing lengthy stuff like reviews and blog posts, it will drive you nuts. It happens quite frequently that the keyboard triggers double characters despite them being hit just one time. Also, when typing fast, it tends to skip characters every once in a while, so you constantly have to check for typos, which is extremely annoying and wastes a lot of time. Another problem is that the mechanism is poor crap. It seems like the plastic can't handle the temperatures of the processor since in that area, after a couple of days, buttons started to get stuck, which makes the typing experience even worse. What we do miss on the keyboard are shortcut buttons for controlling screen brightness. Doing that by mouse or touch screen is just way more time consuming. What's working much better is the touchpad, which doesn't have any issues besides a slight rattle of the touch surface. 
The mouse buttons can be pressed across two thirds of the touch surface. Accuracy and reaction times of the touchpad are very good. Multi-touch gestures do work just fine and it never happened that it triggered a pinch to zoom gesture when doing two finger scrolling. All gestures can be configured freely, so anyone coming from macOS can recreate the workflow he is used to. For example, you can set the same three fingers gesture to switch between virtual desktops or you can use a three finger swipe up or downwards to open up the app switcher. Just the same as on a Mac. Inside the touchpad surface, but not a part of it, is a fingerprint scanner and this one actually is really awesome. It unlocks the laptop very fast and pretty much never fails. There really is no more comfortable way of unlocking a Windows machine than this. Just a quick touch and boom, you are in. Next, let's have a look at performance. Coming with an Intel Core M3 7Y30 processor, the Cube Thinker i35 really packs a punch in the performance department while still being cooled without any fan. Needless to say that the laptop handles basic tasks with ease. Not only that, multitasking with more demanding applications isn't a problem either. Even Chrome, known for being resource heavy, runs snappy and smooth even when playing multiple 4K videos inside it. More demanding stuff like Photoshop or video editing in Full HD is possible as well. But please know that editing videos should only be done in emergency situations since this really squeezes out the maximum the Core M3 chip can handle. Surprisingly, the high screen resolution doesn't cause issues and that for the most part applies to games as well. Just for example, League of Legends is playable at full resolution and that also applies to the classic Windows Store games. More demanding stuff like World of Tanks needs a lower resolution but then runs fine as well. Trackmania Nations Forever can be played at full resolution and highest graphic settings with a decent frame rate and only minor tiering. To get the heat out of that thing, there is a large copper heatsink on the mainboard which spreads the heat and transfers a part of it onto the bottom metal plate. During normal use the laptop does get noticeably warm but never uncomfortably hot. It's heavy games that push heat upwards and that is where it can get uncomfortable placing the laptop on your lap. Under extreme conditions, when playing a demanding game, charging the laptop and at the very same time placing it on a bed or couch, the body can get up to 65 degrees Celsius. Still, the SoC never enabled thermal throttling on our unit with a maximum temperature of 83 degrees Celsius. The 8GB DDR3 RAM run at a clock of 1867 MHz and in dual channel mode. The RAM cannot be expanded since it is soldered onto the motherboard. For your personal data there is a 256GB SATA 3 SSD which can be replaced thanks to an M2 slot. According to our investigations the SSD is likely made by good RAM which would mean it uses Toshiba flash memory. Something that caused us headaches are the USB ports. Only on the left USB 3.0 port we have been able to reach USB 3.0 speeds. The right port, which also is advertised to be a 3.0 port, only reaches USB 2.0 speeds. And not only that, it also isn't capable of powering an external 2.5 inch hard drive. The same applies to the USB Type-C port, which also doesn't support powering devices with a draw of more than 500 milliamps. But at least it does deliver USB 3.0 speeds and the HDMI and audio output does work fine too. The Cube Thinker i35 runs Windows 10 Home 64-bit. The system of course is fully licensed and the key is stored inside the UEFI firmware. The system boots in English language and you can install any additional languages you like. There is no pre-installed bloatware and also no malicious software. Other operating systems do boot with no issues. We tried the latest Ubuntu version which recognized all the components except for the touchpad and the fingerprint scanner. The touchpad can be made working by installing a new Linux kernel. Thanks to dual band SE Wi-Fi, the Cube Thinker i35 delivers good network speeds. Signal strength is pretty good and one floor below the router we still reached a decent bandwidth. The Bluetooth module supports the 4.0 standard and signal strength is average. Using headphones we have been able to move one room away without getting interferences. Both the speakers in the inch deliver a good enough quality if you enable bass boost. Just make sure not to hit the maximum volume since from about 80% there will be distortions on the higher frequency range.
3.5 mm headphone jack delivers a very nice audio signal with great volume and no bass heaviness. The stereo microphone has been a huge surprise to us since it delivers a great audio quality considering the price tag. It actually is nowhere behind a MacBook Pro and you might not believe it, but the audio of this review is actually recorded on the Cube Thinker i35 entirely. The 2 megapixel front camera doesn't deliver top notch HD quality, but hey, it's good enough and much better than most of the other Chinese laptops and tablets. If you like to Skype, you won't be disappointed. Battery life of the Cube Thinker i35 hasn't satisfied us. Some reviewers advertise it to be 7 to 8 hours, but that's just plain bullshit. You only can reach this if you just let it sit at lower screen brightness and no apps running. Realistic battery life figures are 3 to 4 hours. Charging the battery goes fairly quick within 2 hours and 45 minutes for the DC in port. Using the Type-C plug speeds it up to 2 hours. But you need to know that you only can charge through the Type-C port if you use a power delivery capable power supply and a Type-C to Type-C cable. Using a standard power supply or Type-C cable does not work. Verdict? The Cube Thinker i35 is an offer without competition when charging by the specs alone and that is especially true if you can catch a deal that cuts the price to 560 bucks. But going into details, it has some serious flaws, especially the bad keyboard and insufficient battery life are flaws that render the Thinker i35 useless for everybody who does type a lot and needs runtimes of more than 5 hours. This is why we just can't give a full purchase recommendation for this one. Think carefully before getting it to make sure those flaws don't interfere with your needs. So that's all for this video, a shop link and more information is located down in the video description. I was Christopher for CMM, thanks for watching and of course see you in the next one.